Hey everybody, I'm Trish Sir, and along with my dear girlfriend Karen Mills, we are bringing you our new podcast called What I Know So Far. Because truthfully, we don't know a lot, but what we do know, we share with each other. And we are so excited to bring you all that information too. And we can't wait to learn from you. And some of our dear friends are going to come on and teach us their life experiences as well. So buckle up, Buttercup. It's about to get real in all the ways. And we cannot wait for you to join us. Like, subscribe, and listen along. Okay, we're doing it. Yes, we are, Trish. <laughs> yeah, how excited are you? I'm so excited that <laughs> that we can we're see. We're excited that we're here. I'm in Los Angeles. Karen, you are in Chattanooga. Chattanooga, Chattanooga. where you live. I live here, and we have talked about doing this. Uh, I don't know how long have we talked about doing this podcast. Wow, at least a year and a half. <laughs> I would I would toast on that. And um, we are the queens of let's make a plan, let's do, and then we're both very busy and very busy schedules. But we finally got our ex together with the help of uh, our very dear girlfriend, who you cannot see in the background, but is magical. Corey, you're on the screen. Do you care to be on the screen? I'm, I'm like, you can stay on the screen. Don't worry about you. I just want to make sure because she'll be like, oh, hell, I'm here. I'm thrilled that she's there. Uh, Y'all, this, uh, this is the first episode. This is the inaugural episode of what I know so far, which is the podcast Karen and I have been dreaming up for a year and a half. Yes. Yes. And it is what I know so far is that it is really hard to coordinate two people's schedules. <laughs> You would think that would be all. <laughs> Girl, well, let's be fair. We're two touring comedians. We uh, both have lives to tend to and are usually somewhere crazy that you can't just go, hey, you know what? Sounds good. Let's run a podcast. And neither of us are like ridiculously technical. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. I am ridiculously <laughs> not technical. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, you and I are pretty, I'd say, savvy and on it, considering it's not like our day, our full gig, to, to be on it. But I feel like this is what's taken us, the, you know, the hitch and the giddy up to get here. So we're thrilled to be here. And we really wanted to do a podcast that mattered to us, because as good friends, we've been good friends now for, my God, Karen, how long have we known each other? 13? 2013, I think? 10 years, or maybe it was 12. Uh, it's, it's, it's just about, is that it? Not no I way. Feel like it was long. You know, time, I'm not a good with time. I think it was probably, mm, 20, I'm not sure, 2011. I know, it's been, yeah, that feels, okay, that feels probably right. It's been a buttery minute. So we call each other, if we're not on the road together, which has always been a blessing, we always call each other with, you know, our own life hacks and things to do to keep each other better and what we learn from somebody else you know i mean that's also the beauty of of who we are and how we do so this was where uh, what i thought so far came from share podcasts or books or whatever that we found meaning in uh you know movies whatever that we feel like the other one yep yeah, you're right supplements <laughs> health supplements tip. a good beer I love a light <laughs> beer if it tastes good. <laughs> so, you know, we share uh, so much with each other because we know each other so well <laughs> and know what the other one would like. And usually it's the same things. And that's what this came from. And then we were like, we ask all of our friends the same question. So I think that that was the other great part of this was really going, you know what? What do you want to talk about? So that's where it came from. What I know so far is I know that I'm thrilled to do this with Karen. I know that we'll. Um, eventually get to do it together and in person, which will be more amazing. But I'm thrilled to do this right now with you. Well, honey, thank you so much. And, you know, I always love seeing you and talking to you even when it's on Zoom. And, yes, I am in Chattanooga, and you're, and we don't have a beach, just so you know. I know. See, okay, 
to, be, to, to give you some backstory, y'all, in 2020, I decided to pick up and move to Atlanta because of the COVID. And I was like, okay, I'll move. And I'd gone through a divorce. So I had to, I couldn't afford a house in LA because you can't even buy Tic Tac here for, you know, under a million dollars. So I was like, where could I afford a home? So I went and moved to Atlanta and I only lived two hours from K, which was so nice. I was two hours away. I just learned that I'm not a big fan of Atlanta because I need to be by a massive body of water. And Lake Lanier wasn't cutting it, so don't come at me, Atlanta people. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. And I was just out in uh, San Diego, and and while I was sitting there having lunch and looking at the ocean, and I thought, uh, you know, it's it's, 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 church. Church. it's it's church to me. It is. I mean, I feel the presence of God at the ocean. I mean, it's just, there's nothing like it. Please say that that and in the words of my memo that'll preach that <laughs> will preach because it's true there's something incredibly medicinal maybe it is that level of nature and i had to get back to it i lived in la before i moved during the pandemic post-divorce and i just was like i know i'm southern i love the south there's nothing about the south i don't love i just am i'm meant to live by the ocean now and I get that. And that's what I know about myself so far is that life is too short. Man, you got to live where you got to live. And praise God, I got a new husband. We enjoy him. We'll cover that later. Um, <laughs> that that was on board. That was on board. Isn't he fun? My, the, the new husband. I say it like I just traded up, but I did <laughs> trade up. Uh, I did. It, trade up for me. The oval was fine. He just, we weren't for each other. As we all know, we'll get right into that, y'all. Uh, but that's that's really I, I, that's another part of what I know so far, right? Okay, that's what makes it great is we get to talk about stuff. Kay and I talk about everything when we get on a call together, and it was like what a great opportunity to talk to each other about it, but also help people that you know there are people that sometimes will message me on social and they're like I'm going through this. I'm like you're not alone, you know you're not alone. There's a whole bunch of us going through all that, and so that's what came from. And how many friends we're lucky enough to have. That are that are going through stuff or their stories. I'm gonna cover all that. And just as we, when we uh, talk on the phone, we should give this warning to people listening that at any moment we could take a hard right. <laughs> hard right. <laughs> we we hard right. so much. We will yeah. most likely get back to it. If we don't, tell us, and we'll come back to it on another episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be episode 10, and we'll still be trying to talk about this one thing because <laughs> because we saw a squirrel. <laughs> that's right, a squirrel. Look, that's, the, that's the beauty of us, though. We will talk to you about uh, dogs, family, travel, imposter syndrome. Uh, right? Mary, I was about to say Mary. I just called it Mary Menopause. Mary Menopause. <laughs> that that sounds. It sounds better than Perry. Ma Mary sounds good. Yes, all of those wonderful things. <laughs> and Dolly, That's we'll talk about. Oh, Dolly! It, on the Thanksgiving, did you watch it, Kay? The cow, uh, Dallas Cowboy. The Cowboys. Her and the uh, last time Cowboys. Four. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, look, the woman's 77 years old. 77. I don't think I'd, I, I don't think I'd put that outfit on right now. So I was so tickled, but I was worried to death that that glossy stage and that six inch platform, like pump she had on, that we were going to lose Dolly just from as she was holding on. If you go back and look at the footage, she's holding on to the stage. <laughs> I was like, oh, Jace, my husband and I were praying over. I was like, please, this can't be the time we lose her. <laughs> <laughs> well, she looked phenomenal. But yeah. She that, looked amazing. I was worried like, to death. Worried to death. I was like, y'all need her in a harness. She needs to fly like Peter Pan on the stage now. <laughs> we need a pink needs to come in. You know. She is. Look her in. <laughs> Okay, that's a million dollar idea. Dolly <laughs> needs to go to pink school and learn how yeah. to like just in case the, the, the hills get away from her. <laughs> they can just <laughs> put water all in the air and bring her back around. 
just graceful. She can just do fun arm gestures. She don't have to flip like pink because I'm sure she's worried her wig would go flying, and I don't want that for her. <laughs> She'll be like uh, Miley coming in on the wrecking ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I hope that um, Big Steve and Judy and everybody on Dolly's team is listening to this right now. And that y'all get Dolly a harness because we are on team like Peter Pan. She don't need to do acrobatics like Pink. No, but like no. Peter Pan, where she has a lot of arm gestures and can do this and get her like almost like she's got butterfly wings. You know, she loves a butterfly. I know we have. We have taken a turn, y'all. But listen, this is what we know so far. We need to keep Dolly in bubble wrap because she's a national treasure. <laughs> yes, we both know that. That's for sure. Oh, it's the beauty of being from the South. That's why we love her. Um, okay. I think what's the other big, I would say well, the other thing we really need to cover is why we're doing this, why we wanted to do this of all the podcasts, all the ways, all the ways we could, you know, it's cause it's comics. I mean, it would have probably been easier to just go do something, you know, let's just be funny. But I think, <laughs> what do you think? What do you think the reason is why we're doing this podcast? Um, well, I think, well, honestly, I think that's what has taken so long to really launch it is because I constantly question, why am I doing this? What do I have to offer that anyone really cares about? <laughs> and that's the truth. I, oh. But I, I've always questioned that. And then I realized that, you know, everybody is going through the same things. And sometimes you can offer something from your experience that will help somebody else. And I do get, like you, get a lot of messages from people that, you know, I'm an ovarian cancer survivor. I've been through a horrific car accident. Uh, I, you know, I, I believe in overcoming and sharing your story. Some people don't like to talk about what they've been through, but I believe in sharing it and helping somebody else deal with their uh, circumstances. So uh, that, for me, that's a big part of it. I mean, that alone right there, I think is what it is. It's uh, experience, right, Uh, with time served. And then we all have, at some degree, I don't care who you are, everybody has some degree of imposter syndrome and we could do a whole episode on that later and we'll probably do multiples because we've all been there everybody feels it i mean it, it's just it's a very real thing yes and um we just knew that we wanted to start talking to all the people that we love hell if it's just the two of us we don't care i mean this is what it really is we i know when i listen to podcasts i listen to when i'm walking the dog uh and when i'm in traffic because Yay, Los Angeles. We we should dive in traffic. And so I love the idea that we get to just be in the car with everybody because I'll call you in the car. It's like being in the car with a friend or I'll call you right on the walk. It's the same thing. So, you know, I, hopefully there's stuff that you get from us that we are able to, you know, add a little, make your day a little better. I mean, I hope we make it. And the reason we're comics, we like to share laughter and, and funny moments and in addition to things that might help you during hard times. So uh, the levity is always important to me to uh, to try to lift somebody up and make their day a little better. Uh, beautifully said. What Karen does that, I will sit and hype girl her to death. They're one of the most, you, no matter, like you just said, Karen had hardships that you go my lord like i don't think i'd be that resilient like you think you'll be resilient and then you say one of your dear friends go through it and i was like i'm i don't know if i'd be that up with people you you're always positive find the silver line and, and it's a lesson to me every day on how to like be better but when something dodgy happens i love that you give it the recognition find the funny and keep it pushing and i think that's brilliant brilliant well, I think you give me too much credit, but I do. I, what, if I'm the poster child for anything, it's just putting one foot in front of the other. <laughs> and I'm not going to sit in, I mean, I have as much bad, as many bad moments as anybody, but I, I'm i just not going to sit there. I'm not going to live yeah. in that, you know. So, and, and you're saying what? Cover that. Same thing. So, yes. Uh, we do. We do get that way. And I think we also hold each other, you know, when, not that like, oh, we're always so up with people, but we are, you and I both tend to like, 
go through it. I always give myself what I call the 24 hour pity party if something really, you know, upsetting happened. And I will say, hey, and I'm, I'm so OCD in a Capricorn that I set an alarm in my phone. Like, hey, girl, you get 24 hours. Not <laughs> kidding. And then I say, you get 24 hours to like sit in it and be wallery. And then I'm out because if not, it becomes your life. And that's, believe me, we've all done it. That's why. I mean, I've had things in my life where I'm like, oh, and I've set the 24 hour clock. And guess what? I was like, screw that. I'm so upset. And I've let it become too much. So, I say it with experience is your best teacher. You and I both have always kind of been those great ballast. That was an SAT word. Uh, ballast for each other to keep each other, you know, together and on on the path of like, you know, really. And that's right. You, find you do have to give, you do have to give yourself that time, whether to to grieve something or to uh, feel sorry for yourself or to just feel bad. I mean, you, you're allowed to have those moments in those days, but you have to, you know, you have to pull yourself out of it, whether it's setting a, an alarm or what. But, you know, when my doctor told me that I had ovarian cancer, the first thing I wanted to know is what do we do next? Because I've got to get from here back to my life in the shortest distance possible because I'm not going to sit in this. So, That's you know, right. that, you know, so you have your days and you have to give in to that and you have to let the bad come, but then you have to move out of it. Say, I mean, y'all, there's going to be so much good on what I know so far. I can't even, I, I can't even. And, and if there's somebody that you want to hear that, uh, to come on and talk with us, uh, DM us, leave us a message, drop them in the DMs. I'm the queen of checking a DM. Um, I will read them all. I always do. So please don't be hateful because uh, we don't have time for all that. But tell us, tell us if, if there's somebody you want us to have on as a guest. We would absolutely love to know who you want to hear, uh, what they know so far. Because that's a little bit of everything from how someone got started and what they do for a living to what they do every day to keep, you know, as I always say, to keep the cheese from sliding off the cracker. Uh, I do so much daily to keep the cheese from sliding off my cracker because I don't want to, you know, be the person that walks around and goes, I'm tired. I don't feel like those people to me. I'm like, ah, no doubt. We're all tired. We're all worn out. But you have to realize you are the person that makes your day. So I'm forever in the search of how do I become the person that isn't letting the cheese slide off the cracker? Um, and there are days that I'm tired that I just hole up in the house and don't talk to nobody. Yes. <laughs> And there are days when I'm exhausted and I still have things I have to go do. And I would not like nothing better than to not have to do it, but I have to keep yeah. going and do it. And I catch myself sometimes going, oh, I'm exhausted. I'm so tired. And then I'll go, hello, I'm sick of myself already. You know, I, I can't, I can't let myself you know, because your body, if you send and you go, I'm exhausted, I'm tired, I'm, oh, I'm so tired, what's next? Oh, I'm so tired. You know, you're tired. But if you give yourself, you know, I have an mm -hmm. abundance, of I, you know, I'm full of life, you're going to feel better. It's just, you just don't. That's right. Ooh, Kay just spoke a whole word. That is the absolute truth. The, you, that is, ah. Uh, Say that one more time, because well, the end of that was so beautiful. What you just said, when you just start speaking the 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 way you want to feel, instead of just digging yourself into a ditch, it it instantly adjusts you. I know we sound like we we life coaches, but my lord, it works. It works. Oh, but your thoughts uh, will will be your experience. So you have to be very mindful of where you're letting your mind go. Your thoughts will be your experience. I will tell you that we were um, traveling, lucky enough to travel, right? And it's, uh, this was a couple of weeks ago. We were coming back from London. Again, lucky enough to be able to go to London. So all the things that were, and people, you know how everybody gets when a plane boards, everybody acts like their cattle being hurt. I was like, what is going on into a corral? Like everybody nuttily runs up. I don't get it. And my husband doesn't do as well as that with that as I do. And I just went, you know what? What a blessing that we get to be, you know, getting on an airplane, flying across the world. And he's looking at me like, oh, she's so annoying. I know he's ready to kill me. But I turn into like, what What a great, I'm so grateful because I love these experiences. I'm not having to like feed in to go work, you know, somewhere I don't want to work. I'm not waiting 
to be shoved into a subway and not want to be there right now. I'm doing the thing I want to do. And it's a simple mind shift instead of getting annoyed with these people who I'm telling their reasons to shove on a plane. Until I don't not my job, not my circus, not my clown. But what my is my job is to change my mindset, getting on that plane going, you know what? How awesome is this? How lucky am I that I got to have this great experience and travel here and now I get to travel back. And it's just those little I do them all day long because trust me, there are times, especially when I'm driving a car and somebody cuts me off and Jay smiles with a laugh at me because I go, love and light, love and light. And someone's like, you but I'm like, I want to be coming hard. And I'll just go, love and light, love and light. Because I have to <laughs> shift it. I know you do have to shift it. And and one thing that people, uh, especially being a, being a comic, being someone who, uh, who does try to look at the positive that doesn't mean I don't have moments where I catch myself either being negative or acting and it's just about re uh, you know being mindful that's all it's about it's not that I'm any yep. better at not having those moments I'm just better pulling out of them and that's what I think yep. people need to be if you as long as you're mindful of things you can change it but it's when you go through life just you know repeating the same patterns repeating the same verbiage repeating the same things uh, you're going to keep having the same experiences and if it's and if your life's not great then look at what you're saying and look at what you're doing and try to break the record <laughs> uh, and so that's a that is a whole word I, i'm telling y'all this is church today between uh the ocean is literally yeah. church of um experience is your best teacher don't be a negative dang nelly i i mean really this is you're going to get a whole bunch of this all these nuggets as we keep going and going um and we also had said too which i want to cover we're going to start asking questions which we love to our guests when they come on um our goal is to be able to do an episode with karen and i and then an episode uh with one of our awesome friends and maybe if it's not a friend someone that will be a friend in the future um and ask them questions which i think it's so fun because I love learning from other people. And um, just like you and I send podcasts to each other all the time. I love learning from other people, just what works for them or what maybe hasn't worked. And that's how they learned, right? Um, that to me is really, I think, what's so cool. So we're going to, uh, you want to ask each other the question? So we want to sure. do that. On future episodes, episodes, I said, uh, we're going to ask our guests questions that we want to know that people have asked us i get asked quite a few questions i know karen does too and i always just write them down and make note and then i think the questions that i do want to know from people that i like follow and love and all of that so we're always taking questions if you've got them but these were some ones that uh, karen i just want to ask karen because i i'm always picking her brain anyway and feel free to ask me whatever ones you want but i want to know right now okay what book are you reading right now that you're enjoying Okay, so uh, first of all, I don't read. I listen. <laughs> oh, I love books. I love an audio book. Yeah, yeah, I'm an audio girl. But the, the the book I am listening to right now is "Be Useful" by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh. And who would have thought at this point in my life? I mean, you know, I've always enjoyed Arnold, but who would have thought at this point I would be in love with Arnold Schwarzenegger? I am not <laughs> kidding. He's wonderful. He's so wise. I and he surrounds himself with pigs and donkeys and I mean I am I love Arnold. And he has wonderful advice. He really does. So Karen got me on to or she you called me and said, Hey, have you watched the Arnold uh Arnold on Netflix? And I said no, do I need to be watching this? You go, I can't believe I'm about to tell you this, but yes. And I was like, okay. And I thought, well, hell, I'm not really like, you know, I mean, just so y'all know, back in the day, I used to be a corporate trainer for Planet Hollywood. So I used to open Planet Hollywood. So I had a very different view of Arnold Schwarzenegger. In my mind, he owned the restaurant I worked for. Like, genuinely, that's how my brain works. I was like, yeah, I know he's an action star. And I live in California, so I knew he was the governor, right? So I'm not a dipstick, but I wasn't interested. And then Kay had me watch the documentary which was like four parts and i'm in love with arnold schwarzenegger he's awesome he really is and when he talks about how, where he started and and 
his vision to get to America and everything he's ever done in his life, he has held a vision to do it. And, I, you know, the docuseries was great. And then the book is even more elaborate and this has wonderful, wonderful advice. And so, and, and what I love too about him is, you know, everybody knows uh, all, what he went through with Maria and his family and all that's common knowledge, but he takes responsibility. He does not make excuses. He says right. that he, and, and I love that. I mean, everyone screws up. You know, but it's when you and try I think, to. I haven't read the it, book. Does he cover it more in the book than he did on the on the series? Okay. Basically, all he says is that he, you know, takes responsibility for it. He's hurt his family enough. He's not going to talk about it any further. Everybody already knows what happened. And if you want to know more, Google it. But, um, <laughs> but he says it was my fault. And he, you know, you have to, you know, give props for that. I think. Well, I do too. And I'm going to get, now that you said that, I'm a big fan um, of, I love, I love an audio book if it's actually read by the author. Yes. Um, because I do believe, I believe there's something, it's got a little more like I was obsessed with The Spare. This is not my book recommendation, but I read Prince Harry's book, The Spare. Um, and I started reading it and I thought, wait, I want to hear, if, if he did the audio book, I'd rather hear him. So then I got the audio book. And I was in because there was so much emotion for somebody that's clearly not an actor, right? Obviously, telling that story. I was like, y'all, I was, ah, uh, because Prince Harry to me is the original Truman Show. I mean, that child was born on camera and his entire life has been on camera. And I thought that this is somebody that, that I need to hear it from his, the horse's mouth, if you will. And I thought it was so well done. So I'm all about an audiobook, and now I'm going to get Arnold be useful because I love the documentary so much. I've got to read the book. And he's from heaven, and he lets those the animals in the house, Kay. He lets the donkey in the house. And the pig and the dogs, and he surrounds himself. I mean, I mean, are you kidding? I mean, anybody that does that, I'm all about it. <laughs> Me too. And then he was out there shoveling in the barn. I was like, I don't think that's for camera. I think he does get up in the morning and tends to those animals and shovels, you know, mess. Oh, I agree. I think 100% he does. I mean, that's just, that's him. That's who he is. And uh, I'm, yeah. I mean, I just stunned how much I love Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I mean, and after he became this big action star and then he wanted to do uh, Twins, with Dan DeVito and all the studios said, mm -mm, no, not going to do it. You, you know, no one's going to accept you as uh, with comedy and all that. He he made it happen, and it's the biggest grossing movie he's ever had. I mean, he, uh, it, he, he flipped the script on himself, which I thought was so brilliant because he gets the joke. And I think the beauty of Arnold Schwarzenegger is he uh, he's never a butt of a joke. He gets the joke. So he beats you to the punch. That's right. what I found so smart with him. He's smart, so smart, so smart. He is. So what are you reading right now? Well, I'm reading a few because I always read 13 books at one time. But uh, if y'all haven't read, and I read on it all the time, and I do a little different thing, Kay, because I do love an audio book, but I love a real hard book, like not just uh, on my tablet, uh, The Creative Act by Rick Rubin. If y'all have not read this this is what i did i read the book and then i went and got the audio book like i was you know in a golden book reading circle like a child and i let rick rubin read it and i followed along who am i but it was yeah, he, <laughs> so brilliant i sat and let rick rubin read it to me while reading it i know like i'm a toddler and i needed a snack and a nap yeah, but he, he the likes yeah. what right <laughs> It was brilliant, though, and I, I, like, put it on, and I would sit and read, and then obviously I'd listen to someone I was driving, but I'd go back and, like, listen to him read it. It's one of those books, as and I'm like, as a creative, which also is hard for me to say because imposter syndrome sets in, but it's true. As a creative, and because really he comes from music, but he wrote this beautiful book, and if you don't know Rick Rubin, mega music producer. He's produced everybody from the Beastie Boys to Adele, right? Like, everybody in between absolutely amazing he used to be a little bit of a butthole and he went through it 
and came out the other side. And if you want to listen to his podcast, uh, I can never, it's Tetragrammaton. It's such a weird name. I can never, but that's what it's called. Tetragrammaton is Rick Rubin's podcast. We will put it in the show notes. Hey, he did an episode with Arnold Schwarzenegger and it was so fantastic because I thought, oh, I want to hear what, what they have to talk about. And I didn't realize that he had had the major heart surgery that Arnold had and Rick Rubin uh, was scared to death to have this heart surgery. And so one of their mutual friends said, would you call Rick? He's scared to death to have the surgery you just had. Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't know him from a can of paint. Picked up the phone and said, hey, man, you're going to be great. Don't worry about it. You're going to be, but you got you to tend to yourself. You can't sit here and do all the stuff you were before. You're not going to be that person anymore. And so to listen to that episode, I was like, oh, I need to go get the book Be Useful because I really loved how they interacted. And it was really the first time they had met. They had talked, but they'd never met. And he said, I really credit you to taking this fear. I had so much fear. And you were just very calm. And you were like, listen, hardest part's agreeing to do it. You've just got to agree. You know? And I was like, when did Arnold Schwarzenegger become everybody's shaman? <laughs> and it, it was a really great episode. So I say, The Creative Act by Rick Rubin. Uh, he has a phenomenal podcast called Tet- Tetragrammaton. Uh, I can't believe I'm saying that right. And listen to the Arnold Schwarzenegger episode. We'll put it below because it really is one of those great, great episodes that you sit down and go, wow. Because I listened to Arnold go out and do all the press for this book. And I, he was on podcasts with people that I do listen to. And he had trouble connecting with some bigger people. And this particular one with he and Rick Rubin, it, it just flowed. And I think there's something to say about the two books we recommended. I was like, mm, I just thought about that. It was, I listened to that and thought, oh, I've got to get be useful. And now Karen's saying it. I got to get be useful. So if you know what to go I want to go listen, I go listen to that, that episode. Okay, you'll love it. It really is. I can't believe I didn't tell you to listen to it or send it to you. Karen and I will forever just, I'll just like a, like a just weirdo. Like I'm sending a weird ransom note. I'll just drop her. Uh, podcast like it could be the weirdest time of day and i'm like i'll hear it and I'll okay this. but that's what good friends do i think you know and so y'all are our good friends too and we want you to listen so listen to that episode for sure and karen i need to know uh for sure what show you've watched recently that you're like i loved this i wasn't expecting to love this but i love it well this i actually was expecting to love but um I finally got around to watching it. I watched a movie on Netflix, Nyad. Have you seen that? Oh, no. oh about Diane and Nyad? Yes. Look at me. Yes. Arms. Y'all, it's now you I just said <laughs> swimming arms. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Sorry. Okay. I'm writing that down, Diane and I. Okay. It's called Nyad. Yes. It's on Netflix. And, you know, she um, was 64 when she finally made it from Cuba to Florida. And uh, she swam, it's 103 miles is how far it is. And she had to swim 110 miles because of the uh, currents, forceful currents. And it took her 52 hours and 54 minutes. And it took her five uh, attempts to make it. And she did it straight? Like no breaks? Or she actually uh, obviously couldn't let her body rest a little bit in the well, she was kind of in the water. She was, you know, would tread the water, all that. Nobody could touch her. And, oh you know, my God. oh, yeah. And she'd have, to have a stingray and then, and then they'd have to, uh, they'd have to abort it. And then she, but she never gave up. This was over 35 years that she made five attempts before she ever did it. Oh and when she, yeah. And when she got out of the water, I mean, she was disoriented. She didn't even hardly know where she was. And, um, and she, they, she had to get both ankles out of the water before anybody could touch her. And she was m- trying to make her way to the mark. <laughs> and, uh, and Jody Foster plays her coach who I love Jody anyway. Oh, but yeah. when she came, yeah. And when she, uh, um, and, um, oh, what's her name? Played her. Oh my God. I can't believe I can't think of her. I love her. Um, well, look it up when you say it. Okay, uh, oh, man. Um, Mary Doug Warren Beatty. Oh, Annette Beatty. 
Annette Benning was phenomenal. She played her, and uh, and so when she finally made it out of the water, um, she said, "I've got I have three things to say: never give up. You're never too old to chase your dreams, and it it even though it looks like a solitary sport, uh, it takes a team. I mean, all these people that helped her. Oh, it's it is unbelievable." I'll watch it. Yeah, I yeah. It. See, I love that stuff. I, I do too. I like it, you know, I like a documentary or a true story. So I'm in. Yeah, yeah. And what she went through to um, to really realize her dream is just so inspiring. And oh, it let you, let me just 64. You're never too old. If And for 35 years, she didn't quit. That's the thing I really want to like wrap your brain around, 34, 35 years. I think at year 23, I would have been like, you know what? If I've had sharks try to come get me. I've had stingrays come get me. I'm sunburnt. I'm dehydrated. Maybe this isn't what I'm supposed to do. I really, like, I I could understand at attempt 23, 24 going, you know, maybe not. So how amazing. How amazing. I didn't want to watch it. Her skin, her lips. I mean, I... Oh, it's just uh, it's just unbelievable uh, and so inspiring. So definitely watch that. And uh, what are you watching? Okay, I love a rock doc, y'all. Um, I do love a rock doc. I'm married to an old rocker, bass player, my Jace. So we love rock docs, but I think it's because most rock stars are wizards. I don't have the gift of music. I don't have that skill. So I find any musician just fascinating. And we watched on Netflix, Robbie William. It's a four-part doc. I did not know who he was. He uh, essentially was kind of like the Justin Timberlake of the UK. He was in a boy band uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s called Take That, that Simon Cowell started off of whatever, you know, reality show they were on. And then um, the UK's Got Talent or something like that. Then he broke away and decided to become a solo artist. But he was the youngest of the band. He was a teenager when he broke away. So he was incredibly talented, just didn't have the life skill. And, you know, the British press is hateful as all get out. And so they were so mean, so mean to this little, this kid. And he wrote his own stuff. He had an amazing writing partner and producer. This kid was like over talented, but no coping skills. So watching this and he's selling out 80,000 seat arenas, y'all. Like I, multiple nights in a row, like five, six, seven nights in a row in all of Europe unbelievable and when you watch this please watch this because it's such a great story it's such a great story he's now uh he's now uh 50 so i'm not going to ruin any of this because i didn't know anything about him and i watched it and was fully in so i'm just going to tell you watch because it's such a gorgeous lesson in um a how we used to be so hateful in general to our celebrities and mental health was not even remotely discussed and what what an amazing human being he is but here's the coolest part of the whole thing back then so at his height his zenith of his career was like 06 07 and he's so big in europe today but like the height of crazy european tours private jets nutty nutty stadium shows he had the forethought back then to do full had full video blogs of everything full blogs and was so painfully honest he's probably in his 30s was so painfully honest on camera that I was like, I, he even said, he goes, I thought I was just doing these for me to have. And then look what it turned out to be. And they are y'all. It is so good. Please, please, please take the time. It's four episodes, uh, four hour episodes. Phenomenal. And I had no idea who he was. And now I'm like, I'm a fan. You're precious. I'm a fan. Painfully talented. So talented. So watch uh take the time like i said i wasn't i was certainly not like oh i can't wait to learn about robbie Wood. i didn't i just said to jace yeah i'll watch it sure and then i was like no i'm in we're watching them all in a row <laughs> well i i i am not familiar with him but i i you had told me about that another time that how great it was so i definitely want to watch because i love i love documentaries anyway and i really love to see people who have you know experienced it all and are willing to be vulnerable to give you the highs and the lows 
Yes, and come out the other side with so much mm-hmm. wisdom. I think that's what's really cool. And um, that it's his love and his passion. It wasn't like something that he just fell into. And it, it's so beautifully done. And oh, watch it. Y'all watch it. You're going to be like, what is this? It's amazing. And what a smart business man. So there's that little nugget of. Yeah, no kidding. Smart. And having the uh, foresight to, to, you know, document everything and. Uh, and, you know, and now this day and age and the day and age of TikTok and, and so many people become stars from doing, you know, quick hits okay. and, uh, you know, and it's and then it turns into a money grab because they just have to try to capitalize on it when they really haven't developed an act. So, okay. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> not, 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 right not anybody. Now. I'm not knocking anybody for whatever they do, but I'm just saying to see someone who's really has that talent and to follow that, I would love to see it. So I definitely want to see that. Oh, and and here's the thing too, when y'all watch it, watch it, uh, is to realize that those stages that he was touring with were, you know, obviously built probably in 05 because he, he toured 06, 07. So the stage idea and concept had to have obviously built, been built before. So let's just say that the stage itself was built in 05. You're going to watch this. It looks like it was a show that toured this summer. That's how forward thinking this guy is, like how his brain works. And I was going, oh, so I just love that level of creative all the way around. So mm-hmm. if y'all get a chance, watch it. Okay. I have a very important question before we go. Actually, two very important question. Your toilet paper, how do you put it on the roll over or under when you put it on? Oh, I just reach back on the back of the toilet and wrap it around my... As often as it, you can put it back there on the back of the commode. <laughs> no, that, when, I was in, when I was in high school, some a, a teacher asked us that question, and that's how I answered. But, you know, I was just being funny. Uh, <laughs> going for the laugh, you know. Uh, no... <laughs> Uh, under. You're an under. I am an under, but I, I, you're an over, are you? I'm an over. My best friend Sabrina's an under. And I'm like, no, absolutely not. I'm an over. And here is my reason why. When you're in the bougie hotels and they have that little flat thing, that little metal thing, that is not, they, that's there for you to break off the towel. It's the towel that, that's the paper toilet paper line of demarcation and i learned that when i was little because my my mama was like that we uh, that is to let you know that it is protected up underneath there and i was like oh oh that's a, but you are an under and my best friend is an under too i'm an over things i'm learning i've got a, this is a very heated question we'll have to ask everyone on social if it's over or under and then my other question is toothpaste do you squeeze from the middle or do you from the bottom and feed it on up i usually you this will put you in uh into next year but i usually squeeze from the middle but i don't squeeze from the middle long until i take from the bottom and push it up and yeah yeah so i don't keep squeezing from the middle i just start there and then i i do a correction Okay, that I could I could wrap I can get behind that literally and figuratively. Like, that makes me yeah. I bought a thing. There's a thing that you can buy. Uh, I should just probably brand it in my name. It's got a little like it's what you put on the end of the toothpaste and it moves the toothpaste up. It's this little plastic square. That's the single greatest thing I've ever purchased in my life, and I just sit there and gracefully move it up because my husband rolls his toothpaste. I don't. Well, and I know you being the type A organizer you are, I know you have it very neatly done. <laughs> I like a stand-up tube, and I like to just move it along. I can't do the ones that roll. It's really hard for me. So thank you for answering those important questions. Yeah, and to, and to just briefly go back to the toilet paper question, why mine is under, because yes. uh, the cat... Could do the over, but it couldn't. Unroll. Okay, that's a that's a <laughs> phenomenal reason. I did not think of that. Okay, yeah, I did not think of a cat doing that. 
None of I'm, yeah, and the, walk, right. Knock on wood. None of my animals have ever taken to the toilet paper. Thank God. Well, now mine are um, grown enough that they don't do it. But uh, and I don't no longer have a cat, even though I do enjoy a cat. But uh, but I'm a dog person. But I love all animals. But it, anyway, uh, when I did have a kitten, the whole the toilet paper would be strewn throughout the house where she. And I could say that where she just decided to live her best life. That would be a reason <laughs> to just stay on under. I'm not going to yeah. be mad at that. I'm not this is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go there? That's how we are, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this has yeah, been fun, Trish. I love it's it too. It's been so fun. I know. Let's do it again. What do you say? Okay. Yes. And listen, y'all, w- let us know who you want to hear. Like and subscribe. Um, hit that little notification bell thing so you know when a new episode drops. We won't drive you crazy, we promise. So just let us know. We can't wait. We cannot wait to do more of these and learn what we know so far and what you know so far. Yes, and thank you so much for joining us and and being with us. And we definitely want to hear what you know because I know you know a lot of things that I don't know and I'm always wanting to learn from each other. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. We'll we'll talk to y'all super soon. Bye.